I would like to ask the president, why is it inflationary to let the people keep more of their money and spend it the way they'd like? And it isn't inflationary to let him take that money and spend it the way he wants. Since then, he has blamed to the people for inflation, OPEC. He's blamed the Federal Reserve System. He has blamed the lack of productivity of the American people. He has then accused the people of living too well and uh, that we must share in scarcity. We must sacrifice and get used to doing with less. We don't have inflation because the people are living too well. We have inflation because the government is living too well. So I think this idea that has been uh, spawned here in our country that inflation somehow came upon us like a plague and therefore it's uncontrollable and no one can do anything about it is entirely spurious and it's dangerous to say this to the people. And inflation went down below the national average in California when we returned money to the people and reduced government spending. When he was a candidate in 1976, President Carter invented a thing he called the misery index. He added the rate of unemployment and the rate of inflation, and it came at that time to 12.5 under President Ford. And he said that no man with that size misery index had a right to seek re-election to the presidency. Today, by his own decision, the misery index is in excess of 20%. Now, the president spoke a moment ago about that I was against the minimum wage. I wish he could have been with me when I sat with a group of teenagers who were black and who were telling me about their unemployment problems and that it was the minimum wage that had done away with the jobs that they once could get. And indeed, every time it has increased, you will find that there is an increase in minority unemployment among young people. And for the, Mr. Carter to suggest that I want to do away with the safety laws and with the laws that pertain to clean water and clean air and so forth, as governor of California, I took charge of passing the strictest air pollution laws in the United States, the strictest air quality law that has ever been adopted in the United States, and we created an OSHA an occupational safety and health agency for the protection of employees before the federal government had one in place and to this day not one of its decisions or rulings has ever been challenged so i think some of those charges are missing the point i am suggesting that there are literally thousands of unnecessary regulations that invade every facet of business and indeed very much of our personal lives that are unnecessary, that government can do without, that have added $130 billion to the cost of production in this country, and that are contributing their part uh, to inflation. And I would like to see us a little more free as we once were. Free enterprise can do a better job of producing the things that people need than government can. The Department of Energy has a multi-billion dollar budget in excess of ten billion dollars it hasn't produced a quart of oil or a lump of coal or anything else in the line of energy this nation has been portrayed for too long a time to the people as being energy poor when it is energy rich the coal that the president mentioned yes we have it and yet one-eighth of our total coal resources is not being utilized at all right now the mines are closed down there are twenty two thousand miners out of work most of this is due to regulations which either interfere with the mining of it or prevent the burning of it. With our modern technology, yes, we can burn our coal uh, within the limits of the Clean Air Act. I think as technology improves, we'll be able to do even better with that. Nuclear power, there were 36 power plants planned in this country. And let me add the word safety, it must be done with the utmost of safety. But 32 of those have given up and canceled their plans to build and again because government regulations and permits and so forth take make it take more than twice as long to build a nuclear plant in the united states as it does to build one in japan or in western europe we have the sources here we are energy rich that we have only leased out and begun to explore two percent of our outer continental shelf for oil there are vast supplies yet to be found our government has, in the last year or so, taken out of multiple use millions of acres of public lands that probably 70% of the potential oil in the United States is probably hidden in those lands. 
and no one is allowed to even go and explore to find out if it is there. This is particularly true of the recent uh, efforts to shut down part of Alaska. That this meeting this mission, this responsibility for preserving the peace, which I believe is a responsibility peculiar to our country, that we cannot shirk our responsibility as the leader of the free world because we're the only one that can do it. And therefore, the burden of maintaining the peace falls on us. And to maintain that peace requires strength. America has never gotten in a war because we were too strong. I tell you that I believe with all my heart that our first priority must be world peace and that use of force is always and only a last resort when everything else has failed and then only with regard to our national security. But taking that one no from the Soviet Union, we then went back into negotiations on their terms because Mr. Carter had canceled the B-1 bomber, delayed the MX, delayed the Trident submarine, delayed the cruise missile, shut down the missile man, the three, the Minuteman uh, missile production line, and whatever other things that, that might have been done. The Soviet Union sat at the table knowing that we had gone forward with unilateral consider or, uh, concessions without any reciprocation from them whatsoever. I am not talking of scrapping. I am talking of taking the treaty back and going back into negotiations. And I would say to the Soviet Union, we will sit and negotiate with you as long as it takes to have not only legitimate arms limitation, but to have a reduction of these nuclear weapons to the point that neither one of us represents a threat to the other. That is hardly throwing away a treaty and being opposed to arms limitation. I believe that there is a fundamental difference, and I think it has been evident in most of the answers that Mr. Carter has given tonight, that he seeks the solution to anything as another opportunity for a federal government program. I happen to believe that the federal government has usurped powers and autonomy, autonomy and authority that belongs back at the state and local level. It has imposed on the individual freedoms of the people and that there are more of these things that could be solved by the people themselves if they were given a chance or by the levels of government that were closer to them. I would like to have a crusade today and I would like to lead that crusade with your help and it would be one to take government off the backs of the great people of this country and turn you loose again to do those things that I know you can do so well because you did them and made this country great. Free enterprise can do a better job of producing the things that people need than government can. There's a promise for less government and less taxes and more freedom for the people.